The 6th Saturn I flight vehicle, SA-6, was successfully launched by the National Aeronautics and Space Administration from Cape Kennedy on May 28th. After ignition, the 8H1 engines build up thrust for approximately three seconds before hold down arm release and liftoff. This sequence was photographed at 400 frames per second compared to the normal 24 to produce the slow motion effect. The flight was the sixth successful test of the one and one half million pound thrust Saturn I booster and the second successful flight of a liquid hydrogen, liquid oxygen S4 second stage. The first unmanned boiler plate model of the Apollo spacecraft was carried by SA-6 into Earth orbit along with the empty S-4 stage. The SA-6 satellite, weighing a total of 37,300 pounds, completed 50 orbits before re-entering the atmosphere and disintegrating over the Pacific Ocean. This sequence, photographed from a tracking aircraft, emphasizes the size of the flame or plume compared to the vehicle. The pencil-shaped shock pattern, or Mach cone, a factor of the velocity and expansion of exhaust gases occurring at Mach 1, can be seen just below the plume. One of the eight H1 engines of the S1 stage cut off 24 seconds prematurely due to a turbo pump assembly failure. The disturbance, or flare-up, caused by the cutoff can be seen at the upper left of the flame pattern. Deviation from the planned trajectory caused by the engine out was corrected by the guidance system. Continuing to track the vehicle, we see a typical flare-up as inboard engine cutoff occurs. A few seconds later, the outboard engines cut off. Then the Ullage rockets are fired, retro rockets are fired, and the S4 stage separates and moves off to the right. The orange flash just in front of the S-4 is caused by jettisoning of the Apollo escape tower. As indicated on this SA-6 model, eight movie cameras were mounted in capsules near the top of the S-1 stage to photograph propulsion and fuel operations. Two cameras were placed at each of four locations along the thin lines midway between the retro rockets. Four cameras monitored external activity. The other four monitored internal activity through fiber optics cables located inside the interstage. All cameras were ejected and recovered. This is film shot by one of the external view cameras at fin number three looking forward. The red protruding object at center is one of the four Ullage rockets on the S-4 stage. The liquid hydrogen vent line can be seen along the lower portion of the vehicle. On the right side of the vehicle, we can see one of the blowout panels through which gaseous oxygen from the interstage is vented for S4 engine rocks chill down. This photography was started 107 seconds after liftoff, and the action is in slow motion, not quite half the speed of the real event. Blowout panel initiation occurs as rocks chill down begins. Gaseous oxygen can now be seen rushing out through the blowout panel. There are eight such panels, all blown open simultaneously. Next, the Ullage rockets are ignited. Now the S4 stage separates from the booster and the engines have started to burn. Jettisoning of the escape tower appears as a flash and a shock wave. As the booster tumbles, the horizon comes into view at upper left. The curvature appears concave instead of convex due to the effect of distortion in the wide-angle lens. As viewed from another camera located at fin number one, we watch the same sequence of events. Panel blowout, firing of ullage, and retro rockets and separation.
A third camera at pin number two was designed to start at 30 seconds and run through 92 seconds. As the vehicle reaches Mach 1, sunlight is refracted through the shock wave to produce this unusual effect. This particular camera was designed to view vibration of the blowout panel during Mach 1 and maximum dynamic pressure. The checkered pattern was painted on to aid in analysis of vibration effects. This S4 separation sequence was photographed through a fiber optics cable located inside the interstage. Swirling gas around the engines at separation was oxygen, resulting from LOX chill down. Another fiber optics camera was designed to view the LOX SOX dispersal system. The flashing light at center is a strobe light used to illuminate another photographic sequence. Four of the RL-10 engines of the S4 stage can be seen. After blowout panel initiation, the S4 stage separates and lifts out of the interstage. Sunlight shining through the blowout panels as the booster begins to tumble creates the ghost-like effect moving through the interstage. This sequence was photographed by one of the cameras as it was being ejected from the booster. The white spots are solid particles of oxygen floating by. Here again is Frank McGee. Jack King was an announcement at Cape Kennedy. We'll be clear. Countdown proceeding at this time. Just a matter of a minute or so ago, we armed the pyrotechnic and logic buses aboard the Apollo spacecraft. This permits the electrical system uh, to feed to the various uh, pyrotechnics uh, to fire them when required in flight. In other words, by uh, arming them, they now can accept the signal to detonate them when they should be properly used uh, during the mission. Our countdown is still proceeding very well. Here in the launch control center, some 450-man uh, crew monitoring the status of the various propellants on board the vehicle and reading out on hundreds of other readouts concerned uh, with the vehicle measurements and temperatures and pressures as the countdown uh, continues. We've had an excellent countdown thus far and there are no problems at the present time. To repeat, we are still go for weather both here in the launch area and in the recovery area where if all goes well, the Apollo spacecraft will splash down in the Pacific some eight hours and 41 minutes following liftoff. This is launch control. Well, as you heard Jack King say, everything is proceeding very smoothly. When that first stage fires, there will be a seven and a half million pounds of thrust of energy released, more than we've ever had before, and the noise should be greater than anything we've ever heard before. And as David Brinkley once said, the question will be whether the rocket goes up or Florida goes down. We'll be back in just a moment. Now here is a word from God. Less than uh, six minutes now to the scheduled liftoff and uh, at Cape Kennedy, here is NBC's Roy Neal. Good morning, Frank. Good morning, Roy. How are you? Well, thank you. Hope you're the same. You know, that monster out there on pad 39 was first scheduled to fly almost a year ago. But the problems of bigness and newness and complexity shot the timetable full of holes. Back in September of 1966, the launch complex and the control center were ready, and the giant first and third stages were in place at the vertical assembly building, but trouble at the factory slowed down delivery of the second stage. It arrived five months behind schedule, and even then had to be x-rayed to be sure the fuel tanks were not cracked. It's so big, that job required 4,000 x-rays and six weeks more of time. 
The Apollo spacecraft up on top went through extensive modifications after the tragedy that killed three astronauts last January. And those modifications added several more months of delays. Finally, a September launch date was set, only to be slowed down by another change required in the second stage that cost 11 days, and a final countdown demonstration test that was supposed to take three days but took 16. Mainly by that time, however, as a result of ground support equipment, not the rocket. Most notably, computers, which forced delays or postponements 14 different times. At last, back on the 13th of October, that test was finally completed, clearing the way for today, which is really the biggest test of them all. Now, you've already heard a good bit about just how big the Saturn Apollo rocket is. Before we are finished, you no doubt will hear more. And the statistics on the rocket's size and power are staggering. Everyone involved has their own way of explaining just how big Saturn V really is. Uh, here's one of NBC's. A football field extends 100 yards. If you add the two end zones, it's 120 yards or 360 feet long. Saturn V is almost exactly the same size. All that size and power is needed to combat gravity and get off the ground. Stage one alone is about 46 yards long, the length of a pretty sensational field goal kick. Laid on its side, the whole rocket would extend from one end of the field to the other. A fast halfback can run the full distance in about 10 seconds with all his equipment on. Saturn V, fully fueled, with its 7.5 million pounds of thrust, will take longer after ignition than that to clear the launch pad. Now here is... We have the countdown and all the launch support operations well at this time at 90 seconds and counting. Houston flight now confirms that they are that they are go for the flight, as are all other aspects of the mission. T-minus one minute, 16 seconds, and counting. The pressurization continuing within the vehicle at this time. We also have a hydraulic commit. It will permit the hydraulics to drive the engines in the first stage. Liquid hydrogen tank in the second stage now pressurizing. T-minus 60 seconds and counting. T-minus 60. Our status board still shows we're go at this time. T minus 50 seconds and counting. We have transferred to in power, internal power. The transfer is satisfactory. The 6.2 million pound Saturn V launch vehicle now on its own power at 38 seconds and counting. To repeat, the ignition sequence will start at 8.9 seconds. We'll be looking to lift off at zero. T minus 30 seconds and counting. We'll count down from starting at T minus 20. T minus 25. Stage is reporting ready for launch. T minus 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9. Ignition sequence starts. 5, 4, we have ignition. All engines are running. We have liftoff. We have liftoff at 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. The tower has been cleared. The top. Roger, Jack. Tower clear. 15 seconds out. The pitch and roll program are in. Big stage burning two and a half. One minutes. minute, one minute, and looking good. It's the biggest thing ever lifted off Earth. Vehicles climbing very nicely. Our velocity is now 2,000, about 2,500 feet per second. We are two, three miles downrange. Three miles downrange. Contract. Yes, contract. Uh -huh.
The flight controllers are reporting enthusiastically that all parameters look good. The flight director says go all the way. One minute, 50 seconds. Fifteen miles downrange, two minutes, coming up on uh, staging. Booster says he's go on all sources. The rocket is over. The inboard engines have cut off. The inboard engines have shut down at approximately two minutes, eighteen seconds. No reports yet on the outboard engines. They are the outboard engines. We can see it visually. Outboard cutoff was called at 2 minutes 34 seconds. We're 50 miles downrange. The S2 has ignited. Great. Thrust is okay on the S2. The booster says we've got a good second stage. Good. We are 64 miles downrange. Our velocity approximately 10,000 feet per second. Second plane has separated the interstate surrounding the second stage engines.